Meghan Markle is the mastermind behind this spectacular comeback to repair her blemished image. This is what all her puff pieces are trying to tell us, and they've been trying to tell us this for a few months now. Okay, so fool me once, shame on you, but fool me twice, shame, shame, shame on me. Honestly, folks, never in my life could I have imagined such a level of cringe and manipulation coming from this past her expiration date actress and a talent agency. I guess it's really fascinating when you think about it. The only thing Megan could possibly mastermind would be a parking lot pap walk. We know she's good at that. She has tried to be an actress, and she wasn't very successful. She has tried to be a humanitarian. Well, she didn't try all that hard. See, the thing is, Meghan Markle is never going to put in the work to actually make her dreams a success. And I don't know what she was up to in Uvalde. I mean, how offensive was that? And obviously, that little trip blew up in her face. Now, she tried to be Harry's little co-captain in the Invictus Games, and she made a complete fool out of herself. She tried to be a world leader. How could we forget that she and Harry decided they needed to release a statement to support Ukraine, and then Meghan called up U.S. senators using that Duchess title to support paid family leave? I mean, she really believes that she is respectable enough to have any power whatsoever. Meghan, you're a nobody. She tried to make herself into a victim to get sympathy, and that little plan blew up in her face like all the others. The truth is, Megan is an over-the-hill Z-list mattress actress with no actual talent. Being a cable TV actress, though, was not good enough for Megan because she was destined for greatness, don't you know? And I'm not so sure how this TIG relaunch is going to go either. In order for people to want to visit her website, I would think they would need to like her. World domination is always going to be just out of Megan's reach because nobody respects her or Harry, and she's going to accept nothing less than power over everybody. I think we're always going to be stuck in this loop of Megan rebranding herself and us having to be subjected to all these puff pieces. But you know what, guys? I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm just going to laugh at it for all of its narcissistic, cringy absurdity. There is something deeply uncomfortable, though, about watching a woman in her 40s try to make it like she's some young starlet. I mean, come on. She reminds me a little bit of Edie Beale. She really wanted to be a model, actress, singer, and dancer. And she was desperate. She went on and on about it well into her old age. And it was pathetic. And this is going to be Megan. But unfortunately for Megan... That ship has sailed. She has done way too many things that are simply unforgivable. I mean, intentional cruelty is not something people are just going to get over. Who can possibly look away from all this? I foresee two big problems for Megan. So first of all, her money is not unlimited. WME is not cheap. Megan expected this company to bring her these lucrative deals, deals that if she had been able to land them would have been enough to offset the cost and it would have also made her some money in the process. Well, clearly, this has not happened. And even worse for Megan, it's impossible. And that's because it doesn't matter how much Megan pays her PR company or her talent agency, it's not enough to make her likable. And so these high end corporations don't want anything to do with her. It doesn't matter who is representing her. And this brings up Megan's second big problem, her talent or lack thereof. And I know, Megan wants to keep seeing her name in the news, but she has no real talent, there's nothing interesting about her. So once the money dries up and she can't pay these PR people anymore, I don't believe she's going to be getting the attention that she so desperately craves. Unless, of course, she becomes even more cringy. And honestly, guys, I think that's the route that she's going to choose. And here's why I say that. Meghan Markle has no taste. She has no class. Meghan Markle doesn't really care about upholding her dignity. And she might not notice that she has moved into the laughingstock category. I mean, just think about that car chase stunt in New York. It seems like Meghan still doesn't know how much of a fool she made herself to be in all that. It seems like Megan has a real blind spot when it comes to how other people perceive her. But she is going to notice a couple of things. Number one, invitations from big celebrities she is so desperate to get in good with. She's going to notice that she's not getting invited into anything. And another thing she's going to notice is that the money isn't flowing into her bank account the way she wants it to be. 
Megan is addicted to fame and money. And this addiction is so incredibly powerful that it blocks out basically all other perceptions for her. So Megan essentially is all dressed up but doesn't have anywhere to go. She really is a pitiful character. And in some ways, honestly folks, I almost feel sorry for her, but then I remember everything she has done, everything she said, and my sympathy quickly dries up. All right, a couple of corrections that I need to make. So I said they paid $200,000 to go to Kevin Costner's charity event. Actually, that figure was off. That was actually the price of the VIP table. So actually, they just bought three single tickets for themselves because they were turned down to attend as VIPs. Well, they are not VIPs, so good thing they were turned down from that. And I also said something last year about that some big leaks were going to come around October. And that was pretty easy to predict because I was thinking about when specific legal cases were probably going to start being heard. And Meghan and Harry's behavior is also incredibly predictable. So anyway, there is something coming out. Their staff emails, Toya and Tanya's emails specifically. Let's rewind just a little bit. Let's talk about Meghan's bullying of staff and then the blacklisting that came after that. So this is why Meghan has not gone to any of the big fashion events and nobody around has supported her. It is funny when these predictions turn out to be true, isn't it? I mean, basically everybody is saying the same things about the emails. There was an email from Toya and there are many more like that. The email from Toya is the email about what happened in Harlem. How Toya had to set dress and stage manage all the alleged charity events of Meghan and Harry. But of course, there's even more sinister stuff going on. Because of course, they also made apparently even the children sign those NDAs, or they made the parents sign them, but they are bound by NDAs. We're talking about seven-year-old kids here. I mean, what is wrong with the sugars who still support the two of them? Like I said in one of the last videos, I am convinced all those sugars bullying people online are paid to do so. And apparently Meghan and Harry really are blacklisted among some of the Hollywood elites. You don't have to be a genius to understand where the problems with the Beckham family comes from. Now, Victoria is a designer. And I'm also curious about why that alleged Dior partnership hasn't started yet. I thought Meghan was going to be the new face of Dior. Meghan Sugars insists that she's this fashion icon. So why hasn't she gotten any lucrative partnerships? And apparently she still is not giving up on these political aspirations. But it's not going to work very well for her because Meghan Markle has a serious cash flow problem. She spends a lot more than she's got coming in. But anyway, that's why we've been getting a lot of these puff pieces about the impending divorce, that Harry's living in hotels now, that Meghan's not supporting him. Apparently, that is all set up for this hate campaign. Meghan Markle is going to try to play the victim and claim that Harry and the royal family are trying to take her babies. So they thought this was going to make Meghan seem like the perfect running mate. I don't know why they thought that, because obviously Meghan Markle is about the worst choice for running mate. But anyway, they really thought that Meghan was going to do better than people like Kamala and Hillary, because I guess in some types of polls, she was doing better. I can only assume that's because they didn't know who Meghan Markle is, and they know they don't like Hillary and Kamala. To me, that would explain that. But anyway... They were testing some type of and markle ticket. Again, I'm not sure how they thought that was going to be a winning ticket, but apparently some people really believed this was going to be a good idea. Well, soon enough, it became obvious that was not going to be a good idea because Meghan and Harry don't pay their bills. And the new agency seems to not know about the blacklisting. If the new agency really didn't know that Meghan and Harry are absolute trash in Hollywood, then I don't believe they know celebrities all that well after all. But anyway, apparently we did get it right that Meghan and Harry are always booking VIP at these celebrity concerts and then nobody wants to take a picture with them. Hmm, I wonder why. So since no celebrities actually wanted to take pictures with them, of course they just paid for it. So if you thought that there was something weird about that photo of Megan with Kelly Rowland and Kerry Washington, well, it's because there was something weird about it. Kelly and Kerry did not want to take that photo with Megan. They were paid to do so. 
And even though her agency keeps trying to turn things around for Megan in terms of popularity, it's not working. Her popularity is now worse than it has ever been. So the latest poll that they did, the numbers came out basically halfway into Invictus. And that's why they decided all of a sudden that Megan had to join Harry because they saw that her favorability rating was so incredibly low. So anyway, apparently in the coming weeks and months, there's going to be more stuff coming out about these finances. There is some really shady stuff going on, as we suspect. Stay tuned, and of course, I'll share the latest updates as I get them with you. And you, what do you think about Meghan Markle? Please tell me your opinion below in the comments. And if you think my video is useful, don't be afraid to like and share it with your relatives and friends who would also enjoy it. Besides that, please subscribe to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for watching, have a lovely weekend, and I'll be back to see you in the next videos.